Well hello internet and welcome to part 9 of my C video tutorial. Today based off of all the questions I've been receiving I'm going to focus in on struct linked lists and I'm going to show you how to create them, how to print them out, how to delete them, how to search through them, how to do all sorts of things with them. The first thing I want to do however is take a closer look at exactly what a struct linked list is. Okay so we're going to be working with products and each one of these guys right here is going to represent a struct product that we're going to be creating. And each struct is going to have a name for our product and a price for our product. And then it's going to have a next value, which is going to contain a pointer to the next struct. This is going to continue on and on and on as long as we have structs in our linked list until we get to the point that we have nothing in here, no reference to a new product, and then of course we're going to put a null character in there. So basically in this tutorial we have to figure out a way to allow input of all these structs, and then later on in the next tutorial I'm going to cover how to search through these linked lists, pull out structs, and also delete them and do all sorts of other things. So I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, have my same basic setup, text editor over here and terminal over here, and the very first thing that I'm going to do is create my struct, and here we go. And I've been told this is something that's asked in interviewing questions all the time, like I've been overwhelmed with the number of questions about this concept here. Okay, so we have a float price, and we're also going to have product name, and I'm going to say it's 30 characters max, and then of course we're going to have struct product and this is going to be a reference to the next struct in the linked list. All right, so I could do this in a whole bunch of different ways, but what I've decided to do is to traverse my struct linked list. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to store two of these globally, just to keep everything very, very simple. And this is going to be the first node, and I'm actually gonna give it a value of null, and that's gonna be the first node or the first struct product in my linked list. And then I'm gonna create another one, and this is going to be the last node or product, and I'm also going to give it a value of null. Okay, so the very first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to have to create a whole bunch of these different guys. But the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a way to input data into a struct. And let's just go through this step by step. And all the code, of course, is available in a link in the description. Now, i got to think about here. What am I going to do in regards to entering information? Well, I'm going to bounce around here a little bit as we think our way through this process. I'm going to have to create a new struct, of course. So let's just go P new struct. Just give it that name. It doesn't matter what its name is. And again, I've said multiple times this isn't necessarily needed in C, but it is needed in C++, so what the heck. Now what I need to do is I need to set some space aside inside of memory. And I just pass inside of this size of and I have no way of knowing how many structs there's going to be or anything, so I'm just going to create a new struct product in memory every single time I create a new one. And there that is. If you want to see the whole entire thing there on the screen at one time, there you go. Actually, let's just keep that open. Well, then let's say that I want to print a message out on the screen that says something like enter product name. And then after that, I want to go scan F and get myself a string. I'm just keeping everything as simple as possible here. Then I'm gonna have to put an ampersand here, and this is needed here just because scan f requires it, just like always. There's nothing to worry about. There's nothing particularly specific about this struct. Then what I need to do is actually reference product name, and that's gonna store that inside of there. And I'm gonna do pretty much exactly the same thing for the price. Let's just divide that up a little bit. Enter product, and I'm gonna say price here. And then here, this is gonna be all the same even though this is a float and it isn't a character array. I can just type in price, okay? So that's where that's coming from. Product name and price, there you go. Doesn't matter if it's a float, doesn't matter if it's a string. This is the way it's always gonna be. That stuff's causing a little bit of confusion. Well then what I need to do is come in here and think about what I'm doing. Now if the first and last struct are going to be equal to each other, we know in this situation that this is going to be the second struct that we are going to be adding to our list. So something to think about, and I'm just referencing the fact that we have stored here null in the first one, and in the last one we also have null. So if those are both equal, we know either that we are going to be 
putting our very first value here on our screen or we are going to be putting the second one on the screen. Now we can think about multiple different ways to solve this problem. One way that makes a lot of sense to me actually is to check up here right at the very beginning if p first node is equal to null. Well that tells me if that's true that tells me there are no other structs in this linked list yet and I am going to be creating a brand new list. So if I'm creating a brand new list, well, I'm not really inputting data now, am I? And it probably makes sense to instead have all of that worked out in a totally separate function and just keep this function as clean as possible. Constantly playing sort of like a juggling act here where I'm trying to keep things simple and at the same time trying to write good code. And sometimes that's not always possible. So what I'm going to do is if this is the very first item that's going to go on my linked list, I'm actually going to create the linked list. Else what I'm going to do is all the things that I just did. However, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say, well, if first node is equal to p last node, well, then I know I am working with the second item in the list because we already passed this conditional up here. So that's what's going on there. So we're going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to come in here and go first node next and make it equal to p new struct that I'm creating right now. So let's take a look at this. Let's just assume in this situation that this is the first node in the list. Ignore tomato for now. And I'm adding lemon to our linked list. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this guy right here, whatever this points to, and I'm going to save it in next down here. This is going to remain null, however, because it's going to be the last item. So that's what's going on there. Okay, so now that we have that fixed, that's exactly what we're doing right here with this piece of code. But i got to do a little bit more. Now, since this is the second struct, we know that the last struct is equal to this new one because there are no other ones. If you have first and last, well, the second one has to be last if there isn't a third. Hopefully that makes sense. So we're going to go last node is equal to p new struct. And there we go. Now we know that's true. Another thing we know about our new struct here is since it is equal to the last node, well, we also know that its next value is going to be equal to null because it's the last one. There's no more to go. Else, if we get in this situation, well, then we know that we're going to be adding not the first, not the second node, but the third and every other node that comes thereafter. So at the bare minimum, we know that this is at least the third struct in our list. So we're not going to have to worry about the first node at all. Instead, what we're going to do is change the last node value for next from null to whatever our new struct is that we're going to be adding. So to do that, we just go p last node, which is currently set to null. And instead, we're going to set it to point to our new struct that we just created. Then what we're going to do, so I don't have to keep printing this out, is go p new struct next. Since it's the last item in the list, well, we know that it's equal to null. And there we go. And then finally, p last node is going to be equal to, make sure we spell that right, p new struct. And we do that so that this value up here, these guys, this guy specifically, is set properly. Okay, so that's what we were doing with that. And that is all we're going to need to do to add values or add structs to our linked list. But that brings us to this problem, create new list. We have to actually create a new one. I'm actually going to do it up here. And I'm going to say void, create new list, and then I need to set aside enough memory. I'm actually going to copy this right here. Set aside enough memory so that we will be able to fit our struct in here. I'm going to leave this named p new struct just like before. All this is going to stay the same. All this is going to stay the same. The whole entire thing is going to stay the same. Okay, so now that we have that set up, what we're going to have to do now with our new struct is specifically go into, is specifically assign the value of null for next because we know this is the first item in the list. So obviously that's the way that's set. And then I know I could optimize this by moving all this stuff into a different function, but for now, just to keep it simple, I'm just gonna copy this code. It's not gonna hurt anything, it's not optimized, but I am more worried about you understanding what's going on here and not so much worried about whether it's optimized or not. Just wanna point out, this is exactly the same, whether it's the first node in the list or the second node in the list or the 10th node in the list, we're always going to enter the data in exactly the same way. Then what we have to do is have all of our saved nodes. So our first node, make sure that it is set to the same location as my last node. 
which of course is the same as my new struct that I just created. And that is all I'm gonna have to do with the create new list. That's it. It's just basically just to set up the very first struct and make it work right. Well, now that I know I can input data, create new lists and do all that different stuff, the only other thing left to do is to output the data, at least for now. In the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to search through a linked list and also how to delete items from a linked list. So just didn't wanna to cover too many things here. I'm gonna call this output data. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to create a new struct product. And this is gonna be a temporary location for all the structs in the linked list. And they're going to be assigned each value by jumping through the different next pointers to the next struct over and over and over again until we get null, just like before. So I'm gonna call this products. And since I wanna print out the whole entire list, I need to get the value of first node first. And there it is. And then we can just do something like products entered. Scroll this up a little bit. And what I need to do is go while p products is not equal to null. I'm searching for that null value. The null value is going to tell me I'm at the end of printing out information on the screen. And inside of this while loop, I'm going to go print out and it's a string. I'm going to say whatever the product is, 0.2f. Throw some new lines in there. And then to reference those, I'm just gonna go P products like this and get the product name. And then I'm also going to do the same thing, pre products and get the product price. So that's how we reference these structs. Then after I'm done with that, all I need to do is change the location for P products and make it equal to whatever P products next is the next item in the linked list. And if it comes up here and P products is equal to null, we're all done. So let's file save that and see if I did this the right way. Okay, so we have input data. That's our method that is going to, that we created up here, going to be called and it's gonna ask us for information. And if no nodes exist or no products exist in the list, it's gonna create a new list, okay? Come back down again. Let's have it input a couple of these, three of them. And then after it does that, I'll put data. We'll print all of them out. And I made the same little silly error that I made last time. Let's go up here and correct it. The same exact error I made in the last tutorial. Up here where I am allowing the price to be entered, let's change this to F. Sorry about that. And then let's also change this guy to F. That's the sort of stuff that happens when I program out of my head. All right, and everything else should be fine. So let's file save, compile, enter product name. Let's go tomato, let's say $2, let's say shrimp and let's say $11, and then let's just say fish, it doesn't matter. And let's say $10, all that information was entered in, and then tomato, shrimp, and fish were printed out. So that's how to enter information into a linked list and how to pull it out. Now, since you guys asked me for homework all of the time, for homework, I'm gonna try to put the next part of this tutorial up almost immediately, definitely I'll put it up tomorrow. What I want you to do is figure out how to search for products inside of a linked list, and also how to remove products from a linked list. And then what the heck, also figure out how to free the memory, like we talked about in the last part of the tutorial, in the linked list. Please leave your questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time, 